Nicholas in San Cristobal, Mexico. You are on the air with Representative Jayapal. Thank you for taking my call, Todd. Representative Jayapal, first let me say how much I adore you and the stellar, nothing short of stellar, service you have been providing our country with. I want to see you as the first woman president. Now, we've gone through all the flat. I would here. vote for that. I was, <laughs> right? I mean... Run from Illinois, run. Now listen, this is important. You know, we do have to change the Constitution to make that happen, but we, we could do that. <laughs> we can do that. For you, we can do that. So here's the deal. Yesterday, AMLO, the, Amer the Mexican president, Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador, you just heard Tom identify me as living in Mexico. I lived here 20 years. AMLO yesterday said they have retrieved another body of a young woman from one of those despicable underwater razor barrels. And he is claiming a severe violation of a treaty with Mexico. Now, I take this very seriously. I'm still of the belief that international treaties supersede other laws, correct? And if that is true, why is Governor Abbott not being held in, 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 in uh, what? In the violation of a foreign treaty? and charged as such under the law and arrested. This man is a devil. Anyone who puts barrels under the water where they cannot be seen to entrap people with razor wire is demonic. And AMLO is outraged and demanding an investigation into this international treaty. Why is it not being enforced? Thank you. Thank you. Um, look, I think that um, as ranking member on the Immigration Subcommittee, we're actually looking into all the possible options right now that are before us. International treaties do supersede uh, domestic treaties, but they are also extremely difficult to enforce. And even signatories to international treaties um, don't always enforce those international, uh, those international laws. So it is extremely difficult, um, but I think we're looking at all the ways in which we can we can call this out. At the end of the day, we got to get you know we got to get voters to recognize the inhumanity, the cruelty of these Republicans that they put in office, and that is the thing that really, Tom. I I go to bed and at night and wake up in the morning um, thinking about this because even with the former president, what he understands is that the courts may say one thing, but ultimately it's the voters who also decide, which is why I love to come on your show and talk to people about why it's so important to engage and how we build the movement across the country um, to make sure that we, we are talking to people about the need for them to stay engaged, to vote, to, to be involved. Of course, your, your listeners are all, already that, but we have a lot of work to do on that front. Um, we're looking into this buoy situation. It's just horrific. It is, it is difficult for me to even comprehend how one human being could do this to other human beings. And I could say that on a lot of topics, but but certainly this one um, to me is reminiscent of of family separations. Yeah, amen.